Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam, I hope you're doing really well. And on this channel, I like to talk about all things film, Blu-ray and physical media collecting. So this is the second part of my complete boutique Blu-ray uh, collection video. Uh, it's been split into three parts because the video was so long. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen the first part yet, um, I'll leave a link in the description so you can start from the beginning. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this next part of my complete boutique Blu-ray collection. Versus, there's a new pickup from Arrow, not seen this one yet. Bring me the head of Alfredo Garcia, incredible Sam Peckinpah film. I think I covered this on my first ever video on my channel. So uh, yeah, this is, this is just a classic 70s film and I, I adore this one. Uh, zombie for Sale, really fun uh, Korean zombie film. Waterworld, this is still sealed. I've not watched this one yet, but uh, this was a favorite of mine from when I was a kid despite it being absolutely terrible in some respects. But uh, yeah, um, I'll watch this one at some point. Slip cover of 16 Candles. This is one of my favorite films of all time. Climax by Gaspar Noé. Uh, really, really interesting filmmaker. And I was so glad to get the slip on this one. Uh, yeah, really fun sort of dance film with lots of horrific things that happen to them as they're punch gets spiked at a party that they go to it's uh it's craziness uh the deeper you dig not watched this one yet uh hagazusa crimes of passion by ken russell this is a really fun film uh if you can call it fun uh i think this slip cover is really difficult to get hold of now but yeah really enjoyed this film the first 4k disc that arrow put out it's pretty damn good one to be honest Fortunately, the 4K disc didn't come on with a slipcover, but I'm not that I'm not that fussed. Like the, the actual 4K disc was the most important thing, and I saw a lot of people in the community were bummed out that it didn't come with one, but it, it's uh, it's fine. Maniac Cop, classic film. Blowout, another great De Palma film. Dress to Kill, uh, another De Palma, really fun. Videodrome, one of my all-time favorite films by David Cronenberg. Really wish I had that super special edition box set that goes for stupid money nowadays, but celery, I have the film, so it's all good. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, this is the 70s remake, which I actually believe is better than the original. Bound, this is uh, one of the, I think it's the debut, I may be mistaken, uh, film from the Wachowskis. Uh, that's a really good, it's almost noir, it's like at least has influences from noir films in it and sort of like mob gangster type stuff as well and it's, it's a really good time. Deep Red, one of Dario Argento's best films and uh, I'd definitely say it's his best giallo in my opinion and it's a classic film from 1975. Street Mobster from Kinji Fukusaku, it's a, it's a fun sort of uh, Yakuza film. Cheeky, this is like an erotic type film from Tinto Brass. Um, not sure I'm gonna keep this one. Um, yeah. <laughs> the Beyond, this is quite a rare uh, window edition of The Beyond by Lucio Fulci. Um, so yeah, that's that's cool. Runaway Train, some of these are, that are still sealed. I picked up in a sale a while back that I haven't got around to watching yet, but uh, yep. Yakuza Law. Great exploitation film, Foxy Brown. I have seen this film before, but I've not opened this yet. Um, but yeah, this is starring Pam Greer. And uh, yeah, these um, Pam Greer uh, black exploitation films, uh, if you've never seen a black exploitation film, I highly recommend checking uh, uh, any of the Pam Greer ones out. For instance, Coffee, which is probably my favorite of the ones I've seen. Such a great time, so badass. Oh man, I absolutely adore this film, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. This was written um, by uh, Roger Ebert, the famous film critic. Uh, it came out in 1970 uh, as like a pseudo sequel, except not really a sequel, more of a parody of uh, Valley of the Dolls that came out a few years prior. And uh, yeah, uh, this is definitely going to be making my curation at some point. 
Um, I'm tempted to pick up the Criterion edition of it at some point. Similarly, like what I mentioned earlier with um, The Passion of Joan of Arc, I just love this film so much and I believe there's special features that aren't on both the discs, so I need to pick it up at some point. But yeah, love, love, love this film. Heather's classic Winona Ryder, Christian Slater film. Score, wasn't a big fan of this one. I'm probably gonna have to um, purge this one at some point. The Night Evelyn Came Out the Grave, quality stuff. Catfight, not watched this one yet, but. Will of Nail and I, I have seen this film. It's just, I haven't opened this edition. This is a very, very awesome uh, sort of cult classic from the UK. This is my single edition of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, which I will no doubt part with once I have opened up the special edition. FM, Hellraiser, Phantasm, Sister Street Fighter Collection, Orgies of Edo, Black Mama, White Mama, another black exploitation film. Oh, Cat and Nine Tails, Dario Argento, so good. The Burning, contender for my favorite slasher film of all time. I'm not entirely sure what that is. I probably should do a video on that at some point, but yeah, this is such a great fun film that I, I will, will, will make my curation at some point, but yeah. 12 Monkeys. Uh, I really loved this when I was a kid uh, and in my teenage years and I rewatched it again maybe 18 months ago and I didn't enjoy it as much again uh, this time round. Um, I still think that Brad Pitt is really good in this film but yeah we'll see I might have to purge this one I'm not sure. Weird Science, Pulse, House not a big fan of this one. I know a lot of people in the horror community really loved at least the first one of this film series, but yeah, this one didn't do much for me, so I'll probably purge this at some point. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. This is a really good time. The Prey. Now, this film is a really interesting slasher that was basically lost to like VHS and never seen the light of day on DVD or Blu-ray until recently when Arrow put it out. And what makes this uh, edition something that I'm going to keep is the special features. So normally you'd keep the film for the, the film itself, but what makes this disc worth keeping, in my opinion, is the special features with like interviews and sort of like uh, panels at like film uh, conventions and stuff with the cast talking about the film because it's just so entertaining and they sort of on the offhand sort of make fun of the film because there are some in interesting artistic choices in this, but... Yeah, I'm definitely going to keep this one, even though I don't think the film is fantastic, but I will re-watch it at some point. The Girl Who Knew Too Much. Moving down another shelf. I think I'm going to grab a seat here. Next up we have Dark Water from Hideo Nakata, who's more famous for The Ring. Tenebrae. Also contender for my favorite uh, Dario Agenda film. This was a video nasty. It was banned in the UK for the longest time. Um, but yeah, it's such a good film. Necromantic. Um, I'm not sure why I picked this one up. <laughs> I think it was because it was in the sale for like five pounds. Um, I haven't watched it yet, so I don't have an opinion on it, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this one just based on the concept. Although I absolutely love the cover art on this one. Um, we'll see how I get on with it. Bay of Blood, Mario Bava. This is like the proto slasher film that sort of spawned everything after it. A lot of films take influence from, from this film that came out in like the, the late 70s and early 80s in the slasher genre. So if, you've, uh, if you're a big fan of the genre and you haven't seen this, then you should probably watch this to see where it arguably all started, along with another film that I'll mention uh, in a minute. Dead End Drive-In, good time. Satanic Panic, this is a recent pickup that I haven't watched yet. Society, um, I flipped the cover art on this one because uh, the other side gives a lot away about the film, I think, and uh, it's absolutely disgusting, but this film is, is really good fun, and uh, I need to re-watch this in a group of with a group of people because I watched this by myself and I still enjoyed it, but I'd like to see the reactions that some of my friends might have if I watch this with a group of people. Blood and Black Lays by Mario Bava, another sort of proto slasher film. Uh, this is so good. The color palette in this film is exquisite. 
this is a film that needs a 4K release. I uh, I can't stress that enough. This this would really benefit from uh, some HDR action. And uh, but yeah, this edition is uh, is so good. The Mutilator, interesting slasher film. Uh, yep. Madman. The Wind. Strip nude for your killer. This stars Edwidge Fennec who I'm a big fan of. And this is an, a US only Arrow, Arrow video release. This is the only one I have, um, but I bought it because it's like a Jalo film starring Edward Fennick. So I imported that one. Phenomena, Dario Argento, classic pieces. I really wish I had the special edition of this. Um, but yeah, this is really fun. If you watch the US dub version of the film because the dialogue is so bad in an entertaining good way. And there's some really creative kills in here. But yeah, it's a good time. Bird with the crystal plumage. Dara Argento's seminal sort of uh, Jallo film from 1970. Such a great film. Life Force by Toby Hooper. Deadly Manor. I've not watched this one yet. I've heard mixed things, but I like to judge films for myself. City of the Living Dead. Uh, Lucio Fulci. Uh, I have seen this film. It's just I'm not open this, this edition. Um, I love Lucio Fulci so much. Death Walks on High Heels by Luciano Ercoli. Um, I recently purged a Luciano Ercoli film from my collection. Um, the Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion. I didn't really enjoy that one, so I'll be interested to see if I like any more of this director's work. Um, but yeah, we'll see how we go. The Initiation. This is a fun sort of a uh, slasher film that's mostly set in a shopping mall at night when it's closed. So that's interesting. Edge of the Axe, Inferno of Torture. This is like an erotic um, film from Japan by uh, Terio Ishii, who's known for making a lot of like violent erotic films. Uh, Inferno. We are the flesh. Don't see really anyone talking about this, maybe because some of the content in this is quite controversial and difficult to digest, but um, I really enjoyed this Mexican uh, film. Um, very arty, very art house, something different for Arrow to put out that I think is in their catalog because of some of the controversial content, uh, but I, I enjoyed this one. The Endless. This has been recommended by a bunch of people and I still haven't got around to watching it, but I'll get around to it eventually. Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key. Great film. Big Trouble in Little China. Such a great, great film. Um, love Kurt Russell in this film. One of John Carpenter's favorite films. My favorite films by him. Um, we have the Herschel Gordon Lewis uh, Feast box set. I need to dig into that one at some point. Uh, this is a recent pickup, uh, Shock Treatment. I'm not sure what, is this Nation edition? I don't know what that is. I just saw it on eBay at a really good price. So um, I picked that up and it's sort of like a unofficial sequel to the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which is one of my favorite films. So I've heard it's not meant to be as good, but I'll judge it for myself and see whether I want to keep it or not after I've seen it. Why Don't You Just Die? This is a recent Arrow release. Watch that one yet. Battle Royale. I've seen this countless times, but I've not opened this steelbook edition, but this is such a fun Japanese film. Hellraiser Trilogy. This is like a Zavi exclusive steelbook of the first three the Hellraiser films. I'm going to have to stop for a minute because my arm is killing me. Okay, I've rested my arm for a bit. Let's carry on. <laughs> so, uh, Wes Craven's The Last House from the Left. I've recently upgraded to the steelbook of this one. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic film uh, if you dig that sort of thing. Candyman, this is a recent pickup. I uh, haven't seen this in probably a decade and I really wanted to revisit this one. This is the first print or pressing of Shivers by David Cronenberg. Uh, so it's got the booklet and everything inside, but there was an issue with this edition and uh, they sent out replacement discs. So uh, yeah, the, this this is still sealed, but um, I've got the replacement discs without the error. So I've not actually opened up this, this, this version yet. So, because uh, I haven't. <laughs> And now I have another copy of Blood and Black Lace because I ordered two by accident because I'm clever. So I'll probably do a giveaway on this at some point because it is one of the best Jalo 
um, proto slasher films ever made and um, yeah it'd be really good to introduce someone to this who haven't haven't seen it before because it's so good Phantom of the Paradise really interesting sort of musical film from uh, Brian De Palma uh, The Red Queen Kills Seven Times starring Barbara Boucher it's a fun film I can't show that one because of the cover on it but that's the 80 screen uh, queen collection uh, which has um Murder Weapon, Deadly Embrace, and uh, the Nightmare Sisters in it. I think uh, Vinegar Syndrome recently put out a slipcover edition of their Nightmare Sisters release, which looked uh, interesting. Uh, Amok, uh, probably going to purge that one. It's a, it's a sort of a, a yellowy type film I didn't enjoy that much. Uh, stand up here. And we have Lucio Fortune's The Cat in the Brain. Delirium. This is by um, Lamberto Barber, so Mario Barber's son, and this is such an underrated film in my opinion. Really good Jai film, really good. Uh, the Toxic, Ave Toxic Avenger. This is the Shameless edition of The Beyond. Uh, this is number two. I'm not sure how many of the editions there were, but mine is number 2045, so that's cool. And it's like the case is see-through with the eye and a spider crawling out of it, and it's fun. These two are recent pickups from 101 Films. Uh, we have Prom Night and Rabid from David Cronenberg. Lucio Fulci's The Devil's Honey. What a fun, wild ride this one is. Hackers, pretty cool slipcover on this one. And Prison. Then I got this one for uh, Christmas from a family member, which I've not watched yet. This Jackie Chan's The Fearless Hyena and The Master starring Jet Li. And then we have Eyeball uh, by uh, Umberto Lenzi, uh, which is so campy, but really, really fun time. And then we have <laughs> one of my childhood favorites. I still need to get around to watching this one, but it's Street Fighter. A few BFI releases here. so. Uh, Lahan, this is so good. This is the 4K really restoration of this film. Although it's not a 4K disc, I don't think the BFI have released anything 4K yet. Um, but yeah, uh, awesome film. Tokyo Story, classic Yosajiro Otsu film. Scandal, The Wages of Fear, incredible. Um, Henri Jour Clouseau film. Large Door, Louis Bournel and Salvador Dali film. The Leopard, that's so good. Uh, Lucino Visconti, Funeral Parade of Roses. Can't really show the cover for this one, but uh, Alan Rob Grillet, six films from 1963 to 1974. Takeshi Katano box set. Jean Pierre Melville box set. Some fantastic films in here. Jean Luc Godard collection. Some great and some not so great films in this collection. Uh, yeah, really, really interesting director, but one that I'm very hit and miss on. These are some recent pickups, the Tex Avery Screwball Classics uh, from Warner Archive. Uh, I've watched this first uh, collection of cartoons, um, a really fun, really nostalgic for me because I used to watch these when a lot when I was a, a kid. Um, and yeah, so I picked up the second volume, which I've not dug into yet, but this uh, looks fun. Then I have a very small collection of Second Sight films. Second Sight, Second Run, bleh, excuse me. Uh, just Invention for Destruction. This is something I'm probably going to purge. It had its charms, this film. It's like a Czech uh, film from 1958. And it uses a lot of um, stop animation and uh, sort of like, it's almost like mixed media type filmmaking. Um, but I watched it once and I'm, I'm glad I watched it, but I don't think I'm ever going to watch it again. So I'm going to have to get rid of this at some point. Diamonds of the Night. Dawson City Frozen Time, one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. If you're a film fan, film lover, and or if you're a silent film fan, I should say as well. Um, this film is absolutely incredible about the discovery of a bunch of lost silent films in Dawson in Canada uh, that were basically frozen. Uh, in permafrost and uh, discovered uh, sort of like 50, 60 years later and sort of were restored and um, what was left of them were sort of put on show for people to see and it's so good. Ghost Hunting, 
uh, how to live your La how to live your story selector works by Kevin Jerome Everson. I've heard nothing but great things about this guy's work, so I look forward to digging into that one. Goodbye Dragon Inn. This was one of my favourite releases of last year by Simon Liang. Uh, really, really good. It was a recent pickup from Second Run Liberté. Um, I heard a bit of a buzz about this one, so I picked it up. Akara Academy. This is a really interesting box set. Uh, I've only watched this Transient Life, which is quite controversial in its subject matter. Um, um, but yeah, and the heart, the the subject matter has made me sort of want to wait for a good moment to watch the rest of his filmography in this set. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely interesting and a box set worth picking up. But we'll see what the rest of the film's like, which will determine whether I want to keep this set or not. The Long Goodbye, such a great film. I've seen this one before, but I'm not open this edition. Robert Altman, another Robert Altman film. Images, incredible. Three Women, again Robert Altman. Gosford Park, this is one I really need to get around to watching at some point, another Robert Altman film. The Decalogue, one of the greatest achievements in cinema history, which was actually put onto television. Um, this is like a 10 part, one hour uh, series, a very filmic, very uh, art house type uh, filmmaking from Krzysztof Kieslowski from Poland. And it's, uh, it's a marvel of um, cinematic artistic achievement in my opinion it's so good inferno really good documentary about the um abandoned in uh, inferno film by Hunt henri george clouseau fear eats the soul very important film from um Rainer werner fassbender the bitter tears of petra von kant another fassbender film the bicycle thieves such a great film um a vet uh, Immoral Tales, I'm probably going to pass this one on, I uh, didn't really enjoy that one too much. Duck Soup, uh, Marx Brothers film, really fun, lots of interesting uh, gags, uh, very uh, of its time. Um, Mohsen McMulbaff's The Poetic Trilogy, this is a really interesting set. Um, in all honesty, I don't know whether I'm going to revisit these films anytime soon, I basically picked this up because in my one of my all-time top 10 favorite films uh, close up the character in that film impersonates the this director Mosan McMalbaf so i basically wanted to see some of the films that he'd made um just to give more context to that film basically and i will say that gabe is is interesting and it is a visual treat but the the acting and the narrative of the film were, weren't that engaging in my opinion um but i'm glad i've i'm glad i've watched it but um, I haven't yet to see The Gardener, so uh, I need to watch that one before I actually move the set on. But, yep. Yeah. The Night of the Hunter, classic. Children of Men, amazing film by Alfonso Cuaron. Demon Lover, really underrated film by Olivia Assayas. Um Yeah, it's very much like a mixture between uh, The Lost Highway and Videodrome, if that makes any sense. And it's got a lot of um, explicit sexual content on it so there's a warning there for anyone who's interested by this one but I really really rate this film. The Apartment, Cinema Paradiso, this was the first 4k disc that Arrow Academy put out, I still need to watch this one, I've seen the film before of course but I've not seen this 4k restoration disc uh, that they put out but I'm excited for that one. Police Story 1 and 2, these are such fun films from Jackie Chan, absolutely love some of the stunts and choreography in these. This Gun for Hire, The Painted Bird, I heard a lot from my friend uh, Oliver Reese about this one, so I picked it up and I'm yet to watch it yet, but um, I've heard this made a lot of end of year lists and a lot of critics, polls and stuff, so I'm expecting really good things from that. Early Murnau box set, uh, Shoah and Four Films After Shoah by Claude Landsman, really important documentary about uh, the Holocaust, 